Mojang announced a brilliant new Redstone feature. And I was supposed to wait for it? Ah, I do not think so. Patience isn't one of my strong sides, and as such I took on the task of recreating this calc sensor as closely as possible. And here is the result. If you don't know what this calc sensor is, it is a new redstone component announced by Mojang on the 3rd of October during Minecraft Live. What it does is detect vibration in the form of sound and emit redstone signal when triggered. As far as I know, I am the first person to truly re-implement this calc sensor into Minecraft. I have seen a few people try to do it with data packs, however those are very limited unfortunately. And right here I will also want to thank Yuri and Igrik for helping me get this mod out as fast as I did, as they helped me out of the textures and the models for the Skulk Sensor. The only thing I did not manage to get to work quite yet is the entity that travels from the source of a sound to the sensor, but I didn't want to wait much longer to release this video. The actual entity does in fact exist, we can check that by doing this right here. You can summon it and you can teleport it around, you can do whatever you want to it. But I didn't quite manage to get it to render properly. But you know, it's already there, the functionality of it having to travel towards the sensor is there, together with all the maths. Um, but it's not here quite yet. I am going to fill in that gap as soon as possible, but for now we're going to have to live without it. Nevertheless, this is a brilliant new addition. As said, it reacts to all the sounds, so blocks being placed, removed. Um, let's say mob sounds. A cat meowing. It will also react to that, it will react to any sound in the game. I did get my interpretation wrong in the last video where I said that it would also be able to detect like things things like bamboo growing and such. But it seems like, looking at my comment section of that video, that all of you think it's only going to react to actual sounds. And that's what I did in this implementation. That being said, I am sure everyone is excited to see one or two experiments with those pretty fellas. If you're interested in playing around with the Skullic sensors yourself, stick around till the end of the video for a short announcement. The first thing I would like to take a look at is the quote-end-quote happy accident that Agnes talked about during Minecraft Live. Yep, it's official now, we've got wireless redstone in Minecraft. Shout out to the wishful thinkers in the comment section of my last video referring to Minecraft Wi-Fi. <laughs> Maybe someday. What is happening right here is that this calc sensor detected me walking past it. It activated this trapdoor, which was picked up by this calc sensor, which activated this trapdoor, which was in turn detected by this calc sensor, which then activated this dispenser with firework rockets. This is more or less the same thing that Agnes showed us during Minecraft Live. Now the important thing is, she also had a few pieces of wool in there, and yep, it does also work in my implementation. Walking past uh, Skullic Sensor right now will trigger it, however if you've got wool in between you and the Skullic Sensor, nothing will happen. Once there is no wool, it will once again be triggered. Um, why this works so perfectly is because the distance from those calc sensors and the trapdoors is more or less ideal. Like that's where the range stops, so this guy will not pick up the vibration from this thing anymore. However, if for whatever reason you needed those two things to be closer to one another, well, let's say we're gonna put it right here. This would create an infinite loop of those two kind of communicating with each other. Now, the way to fix that is to quite simply put some wool in between those two. Now, when you trigger this guy, this guy will also get triggered. However, the signal will not go back, 
because it's being stopped by this wall. The same thing obviously works for all sorts of blocks of wool. So like, you know, yellow wool will work just as well. Placing and removing wool will also not do anything. Same thing goes for carpets. Carpets do not block this signal quite yet. But I might implement that in, however I will need to adjust my ray tracing a little. And yes, you did hear right, ray tracing. I am now officially allowed to put the RTX on logo in my thumbnail. <laughs> Now, one more thing related to wool, which was also shown during Minecraft Live, is that you can prevent vibration coming from this piston, which is actually being triggered by this guy right here, from coming back to the same sensor, because that creates a, an infant loop, basically. Once you put a piece of wool in a strategic enough position, like here, it will no longer look back. So for example, what I know is during my testing, and now bear with me for a second, um, this doesn't work as great as it used to before, but it used to always display a circle wherever you were. Now why this doesn't work so well anymore is because the Skulk sensor based on Minecraft Live is like emits redstone signal for exactly 40 redstone 40 game ticks. So it's it's quite a long it's quite a long time. So when we try to do what I just said it will sort of work but it will not be a perfect circle around you and let me just put those blocks down a little. Um, what I had before during testing is I had it only emit the redstone signal for two game ticks. So like one redstone tick. And that basically always displayed a perfect circle around you. Still, nevertheless, I think it's... I think it's really cool. And you even have like an animation going outwards. Because, of course... It takes some time for a certain vibration to reach a skulk sensor. So if we put a lever down here, well, that's outside of the range of this guy. So of course it will not reach it. But if we try to put something here, this guy, again, that's outside of the range. The range is about five blocks, right? So like one, two, three, four, five. Exactly. That's, that's the radius around it. So the signal will reach this skulk sensor way faster than this skulk sensor. It's exactly the same thing we've seen with the entities going from the source of vibration to the skulk sensor. They travel at a constant velocity, so it will take the sensors farther away more time to react to the vibration than the ones closer to the source. So as you can see, all the logic for the entities is already there. They just don't render yet. One thing you can use the amazing Skulk sensor for is a super simple automatic door. So we're going to need a little piece of wool right here. In the middle we're going to have a door. Besides the door we're going to have a block. Underneath that we're going to have a redstone torch like this. This will make the door close. Then we're going to need a piece of glass here and a few blocks like that. And then right here, we are going to have our skulk sensor like this. Now when you walk to the door, there we go, we've walked up to the door, it opened up. And it will do the same thing here. Now the door doesn't trigger the skulk sensor because it's on a piece of wool. So this is just a very, very simple example of what you can utilize this clock sensor for. Automatic door with no visible redstone anywhere. I mean, I guess the piece of wool is visible, but you could also just put this clock sensor one block further down like this. Put the piece of wool also one block further down. And then there you go.
you've got a door that automatically opens up for you and there is basically no redstone. Like everything you've got is underneath the ground. What one of you in my comment section has said is that the skeleton could have one fatal flaw. What if it rains? I, I genuinely can't tell you if it's going to go haywire or not. I guess we can just try. Set where to rain. Oh yeah. Yeah, it, it doesn't rain. In a desert. Nothing simpler to fix. I'll just create a new world. Creative game mode. And let us see if this calc sensor is affected by rain. Because if it is... Well, that could potentially mean a, a very bad flaw for it, to be honest. So, we've got our amazing skulk sensor. Let's put it down here, next to a red sun lamp, like that. And weather rain. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The Skulk sensor is in fact affected by rain. And the person who said that, I'm probably going to include that in the middle of my screen right about now. That's just so brilliant of you. I, I never thought of that. But yeah, of course, of course it goes haywire during rain. Like rain is just constant, constant sound everywhere around you. So this kind of makes it difficult to use in certain scenarios. And what doesn't help it for like, let's say, huge redstone creations is that there's a lot of interference. Firstly, rain. Someone walking by, you don't want your huge piston door or huge farm to just break because someone walks by. And that's why I... In my last video already, I said that we will probably have to encase our redstone creations in giant blocks of wool. Um, interference from the rain, even if we even if we enclose ourselves in wool. But let's test that theory with the rain. Yep. Unfortunately. The skulk sensor still detects rain, even if you are inside of a wool enclosement. Bear in mind, this is just my re-implementation of the skulk sensor. It may be a bit different in the actual game, but nevertheless, this is still a very, very important thing for us to keep our eyes out for. But here's another thought. Using this calc sensor, we can quite easily create automatic lights for Minecraft homes. Now, what I want to do right now is have this lamp activate when a user or when a Minecraft player enters this room. And I want it to stay on for more or less as long as the player is in here. Nothing simpler. You just need to get some redstone dust, make it go all the way out here. Blop, blop, blop. We can then just make it go up again. Here, 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 here. Then we can make it go here. The next thing we need to do is simply take some comparators like this. And actually, even more comparators like that. And let me also take a redstone repeater right here. There we go. Now, when we enter this beautiful house, the lights should turn on and they will stay on for some while. Now, of course, you will be moving around more in this house. The sound might get annoying after a while. So that's one thing I didn't exactly think of, but Still, nevertheless, a very cool idea for your house. The other interesting thing is that we have no 
indication of this thing not being able to work while underwater. So this could potentially give us a little revolution in underwater redstone and being able to create doors and other redstone contraptions underneath the ocean. Or rather, in the ocean. Underneath the ocean would kind of be dry once again. So yeah, building contraptions in the ocean or just any other pool of water. And of course, what everyone has already suggested in my comment section, traps. I mean, nothing easier than creating traps using a skulk sensor. You can have like a few pistons here, just like that. Some lava underneath the floor. Let me pour it out right here. There we go. Then we simply take a skulk sensor, of course. Skulk sensor, there we go. And we run it into, actually let me put it here. We run it into a redstone torch like that. And we power some pistons using that redstone torch. Now what will happen is when you walk past here, the floor will open up and you will fall to your inevitable doom. It will actually work even better from this side because the skeleton sensor will not notice you immediately, but rather when you're directly on top of those pistons right here. And this could really be deadly in certain scenarios. Imagine somebody utilizing such a thing in like a UHC or other Minecraft tournament. The other thing I am wondering about is... The Skylark sensor outputs a weak redstone signal, but... We don't know if it's of power level 15. What if the power strength of the Skylark sensor is completely dependent on how far away from it the sound is. What if that, or like this, would be like signal strength 1, while this would be signal strength 15? That is another thing that we really have no way of knowing, but that is a very simple change, and I would not be surprised if Mojang did in fact make it dependent on the distance from the sound source to the actual Skalk sensor. Now I do hope you enjoyed this little showcase of this beautiful, beautiful Skulk sensor. If you want to play around with it yourself, all you need to do is share this video with all of your redstone loving friends, as the minute we get 10,000 views underneath this video, I'm going to release a download link for this modification called Skulktastic. Yeah. I did come up with this name, I, I think you can tell. That being said though, I have talked to a few people and there's a split opinion on is the Skalk sensor a bit too overpowered for Minecraft or does it fit just right? If you also want to vote, you can click on the poll in the right top corner and decide, do you think that the Skalk sensor is a good addition to Minecraft? Or does it feel too modded? However, with that, I do want to thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.